What's going on YouTube, Aaron here, and in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the Brian Laundry Gabby Petito case. Uh, no new information, obviously, as we're all still waiting for potential autopsy and um, medical examinations to come back in terms of his DNA potentially matching uh, what were considered to be the remains. Uh, I wanted to dive back into one of the biggest things that stands out to me as fishy and just suspicious in this entire case, and that is the search efforts in the beginning, not only the beginning in September, but into October uh, for Brian. And we'll go back and do a little bit of a brief overview. I ended up finding some more information to pair with some WFLA chopper footage from just two weeks prior. Because uh, I know I made the video on October 22nd showing that they were about eight miles off of his body uh, when they initially started searching uh, the reserve, the Carlton Reserve side of the of the reserve, and then they ended up going to the Mayakahatchee side. Um, but I wanted to go through and just kind of show some new information just two weeks prior to them actually finding him. And then I want to talk about how uh, it cost Chris and Roberta Laundry. 85 cents to find Brian. So we'll get into those numbers in a moment, but before we do that, let's go back to this tweet from the Northport Police Department on September 18th. Uh, in this tweet, they say that they are starting to conduct their search uh, in the vast Carlton Reserve for Brian Laundry. And this, like I said, is the thing that kind of sticks out the most to me, and that is the Carlton Reserve. There was so much around the Carlton Reserve part of the the reserve, uh, and of course we all know he ended up being found miles and miles away, and it just makes me wonder why they were searching here if the lawyer did say that the parents gave a lead to the area in which he liked to hike, which we know was not near here, uh, and also if the car was found on the Reisterstown Road uh, on the Mayakahatchee side, why did they start searching so far away? Uh, and I go back to this video from September 24th. Uh, this is actually from my video from October 22nd, just days after they found Brian. I ended up comparing where they were searching in the early stages to where they ended up finding him. Click the link up in the top right if you wanna watch that video uh, after. But I'm gonna briefly go over it here. Uh, that map is actually right here. I'm going to play it side by side. The area which they were first beginning their search, uh, this is kind of where they had their uh, base camp set up. And then if I turn, we can line up the shot exactly with what we're seeing on the chopper footage here. So you can see that body of water in the top left matches specifically with uh, the helicopter footage here. So if I continue playing it, we can just see that the big opening right here this big clearing it's the same circle there and then now they're kind of showing this area this part of the road and then they basically are explaining in this video from september 24th that this is where their search efforts are kind of in between on the south end is right here and their furthest north end would be over here and then you can see if we pause once more just down here it's kind of small but that's kind of where they're set up is at with all of their police vehicles uh, where they were launching drones uh, just kind of their main base camp was was right in that area and that we know uh, based on this map uh, so if we zoom in here this is again that piece of land that we were just looking at that body of water we were obviously looking at it at this angle but that ended up being uh, eight no, 10 miles, just over 10 miles from where his car, the police report from his car uh, was at. So his car on Reisterstown Road was reportedly just off the entrance to the Mayakahatchee side of the reserve. And so if they had that information already, then what were they doing so far to the west in their initial search? And also, if the lawyer was correct on saying that they gave the information early on to law enforcement about the areas in which he liked to hike, that was also on the Mayakahatchee side. So why were they so far away in their initial search? Uh, and then we know obviously on the 20th, uh, they scaled back their search uh, 
and it was several days in between then that uh, things started to pick back up again. I know the information came out about the uh, Sarasota Park, uh, about the camping that they did with Cassie. Uh, Sarasota Park, I think I might have that uh, incorrect. Um, but we know that there was a gap of time between that uh, kind of time frame and then when things started to pick back up. Uh, and that is on the 6th is when that started to happen. We can see from this video, activity was ramping back up at the reserve. And uh, that's what's happening there. And then this video, this is the new information that I have in terms of uh, location of where they were on the 6th, just one day before Chris decided to join them on the search. And I found this footage here to be pretty uh, revealing. So I wanted to be able to try to tra trace down where they were. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video right there. And then we're going to go back to a smaller screen. We're going to go to this map. Uh, and this is where I believe, and I'm actually positive, that they are looking on the map here. So we can see the actual curve in the road here. Obviously, the Google map isn't going to show the same level of water in the area. But we can see the power lines running across. And then actually, you can see the three poles here in front of the cars. Uh, and then two poles behind, one, two. The one, two are going to be right here. And then the three, we actually have to go above to see and to confirm that there are three shadows being cast right here off of these three poles that would be right there. So what we can do from there is zoom out and actually track how far they were on October 6th from where they ended up finding Brian. So if I zoom back in, I can show you guys that... Uh, this is indeed the bridge that they were at. There's the three power lines right there that we were just referencing. There's the shadows. And then I measured it out. And if we see over here, just to the east, exactly 4.40 miles. If they were to take the access roads all the way down, uh, they would be able to get to the Mayakahatchee side and the body or the remains that ended up being found were 4.4 miles away. So they were only 4.4 miles away on October 6th, which we know is two weeks prior to when they actually found him on October 20th. Uh, so that is where they were at in relation to him. Obviously, like I said at the beginning of the video, they were much further over here by this body of water. So something was leading them further east. I don't know if they realized they messed up and they should have been looking further towards the east in the beginning or if there was some you know miscommunication with what the parents gave them at the beginning i'm not sure but we also know that shortly after on october 7th uh, is when uh brian's dad joined the search so this is uh a question that came in for WFLA from their stream from october 7th someone asked what is the relationship between where the mustang was found and where chris L's truck was parked. So I went ahead and I've shown this in a live stream before, but we know if we zoom out the uh, Mustang, like I said, was parked just at the entrance of the reserve. And Chris's truck is actually in the video, the video from WFLA, the helicopter footage, he parked his truck just on the inside. So 467 feet apart. Um, right here is if you can see that, uh, that is the area in which Chris parked his truck. So this is the Reisterstown Road, the entrance to the park. And then if we go ahead and pause the video right about here, well, we're not going to pause. We're going to let it play out right about there. I'm going to pause and go back and show you guys that that's what we're looking at there. And his truck is just down in these trees, which would be just down here. Um, and the fence that runs along right there, as you're seeing that fence that runs along in that little patch of grass, it doesn't show up on the Google maps, but there is indeed a fence there. I mean, I was just there a few weeks ago. Um, so that is how far his truck was parked. You can see his red truck right there. Um, and so it was, you know, 500 feet away. So that's exactly how far they were. Um, it's strange to me that they ended up searching initially, like I said, so far away from where the, the car was reported and where they had the note on the car to remove the car from the scene or it would be towed, all of those things. 
Um, it is, yeah, super, super strange to me. So uh, now I wanna get into the next part of the video, the last part of the video and talk about the cost. A few people have been talking about this in recent videos as well, and I wanted to touch on it. So reportedly over $195,000 were spent in overtime in September and October alone during the search uh, for Brian. And I think that's just amongst the Northport police. So the, the law enforcement and other agencies tied to them, they were working day in and day out, right? I mean, they obviously went home at the end of each night, but there were certain people working overtime uh, just at the laundries. Uh, of course, we know that there was an issue with them, you know, mistaking Brian for Roberta um, or Roberta for Brian. Um, but there were people on the clock throughout the night at certain po points of the search, so they had to, of course, pay for that. So reportedly over $195,000 spent in overtime. Uh, and then I read that former L.A. County Sheriff Deputy Mike Hadsel, who used to run or continues to run his own search and rescue team, uh, estimates that they are likely spending $200,000 a day on just research, uh, you know, on resources. So boats, four by fours, you know, ATVs, uh, infrared detection tech, uh, helicopters, things like that. Uh, some of the drones that they were using. So it's safe to say, and there was an article also, an NBC article uh, that came out on September 26th that stated they'd spent nearly a million dollars on the search already. Uh, and then another article by the Daily Mail uh, stated that on the 24th, they had already spent $1.2 million. So although we don't know the exact number, it's safe to say that based on those two articles, they had already spent a million dollars by the 26th of September, which is an entire month before they ended up finding him. Um, and I know that they scaled down their search, like I said, for a few days before they ramped back up on October 6th. Um, but it's safe to say that they spent over a million dollars uh, for the search for Brian. And that gets to the next part of this video, which is how did Chris and Roberta only spend 85 cents to find Brian? Uh, and that is where, you know, I thought about this a little bit more. I thought, oh my gosh, so his truck, let's, let's think about his truck. It was parked so close to the reserve. Uh, let's go ahead and look up what kind of truck Chris had. And it was obvious by several photos and obviously this video right here you can't see, but uh, he ended up having, and I don't know the year specifically, but a Ram 1500 Hemi uh, truck. And I looked up the average fuel efficiency uh, and found out that roughly you're going to get between 15 and 21 miles to, per gallon, right? And the, the distance between uh, Chris Laundry and Roberta's house to the actual area where they parked their car when they went to go look for Brian was five miles on the dot. So if it took them five miles, uh, I went ahead and looked up the average price of gas in Northport during the month of October, uh, and that was $3.40. So with their trip being uh, you know, five miles from the driveway to where they parked their car uh, and taking that $3.40 uh, gas price, Let's just go with the conservative guess that the gas mileage he got was 20 miles to the gallon on his way to the reserve. So the 20 miles per gallon divided by five miles that it took him to get there is four. So with the average gas of gallon for uh, Northport at the time being $3.40, divide that by four, and that would mean that it cost them 85 cents in gas to drive the five miles to the reserve to find Brian. Not only did they have to drive the five miles, but they had to hike the 4,300 feet or 0.81 miles from where they parked the car to where they ended up ultimately finding the dry bag and Brian's uh, other items and, and eventually when they found his remains. So all that said, I just think it's entirely suspicious to me that they spent over a million dollars, certainly over a million dollars, possibly up to two. Because like I said, if they had already spent $1.2 million by the 26th of September, 
I mean, they didn't find him until October 20th, almost a month later. And I know, like I said, they scaled back the search, but it's safe to say that Chris and Roberta spent almost a, at least a million dollars less than law enforcement and FBI to find what they spent a month and a half and all of those resources, uh, you know, looking for him. Uh, so it's, uh, that's the, that's the thing that sticks out to me as, as the most suspicious and the most odd, uh, in all of this. And I want to talk more about this on a live stream. I wanted to quickly make this video. As you can tell, if you're a you know, recurring viewer, this is not my normal background. Uh, I am back in the Midwest for the holidays. So uh, I am going to be uh, in some different temporary workspaces. Uh, for the time being, I am staying with a couple of friends uh, until I go to my parents. And so I want to get this video out quickly. I'm going to be probably doing a live stream uh, later this week, possibly even tomorrow at some point. Uh, maybe we'll dive back into the Summer Wells case. Uh, but I wanted to make this video and uh, at least share with you guys uh, just that little bit of information. And though it is not new information in relation to the case, hopefully it's something that uh, we can think about a little bit while we wait for more to come out. So, like I said, thanks for watching and uh, I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.